Don't think go don't think about running off to do your daring duo. We've been planning this dinner for three months. Hyrule is in danger. My <laughs> evening's in danger. Your turn with my sword is now, woman. Blah, 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 blah. So that's a nice transition from E3 topics into Incredibles 2. Incredibles 2. All right, so we had just watched the Incredibles 2 movie. No way. Yes, we did. And uh, first and foremost, uh, just to give an overall recommendation before we actually elaborate on uh, spoilers and whatnot, um, I definitely recommend watching this. Oh, yeah. But there was something that popped up on Twitter, which I didn't even think about. Well, mm -hmm. I didn't even watch the movie beforehand, but... Uh, people are, like calling out for like epilepsy warnings just so people know that that's going to be expected. It's part of the plot for th those instances to happen. Uh, so I feel like it's validated, but at the same time, just like be careful like if you have that kind of like issue before actually watching the movie. Because as we transition to like the plot of the movie, uh, deals with the new villain, not the Underminer. He was kind of like part of the opening sequence, which was like all the same, like really good and. I think how they ended that fight, like how bolster that like issue with um, super uh, superheroes still being illegal despite everything that happened on that island mm. and what happened with Syndrome. I, I thought it was great. I think the way that they portrayed like like the issue and how they kind of resolved it with knowing like all the characters having experienced what they did like I guess fourteen minutes, fourteen years like ago, like in the premiere of the original, mm -hmm. was pretty well done. I, uh, what I liked about this movie was a lot of representation, like, as, like, the main protagonist, Elastigirl. I mean, like, I like Mr. Incredible, but I feel like as far as, like, what you can actually, like, see animation-wise, like, I think Elastigirl really does it really well. Yeah. Her her powers allow a lot of fun with mm -hmm. your animation. Yeah. So, I love, I love her, um, her, uh... Elasticycle. Elasticycle. Because of the fact that not only does it go fast, but it also like splits up, so it, it helps with like the elasticity of like her like, abdomen, mm -hmm. allowing her to go through like tighter spaces. Unfortunately, that that had to go immediately. Yeah, she first mission blows it up. It was interesting though, like when she was like kind of observing like the opening of that new Metro Link, that she was just kind of sitting there and like people weren't really paying any mind to her. Yeah, that was weird. It's just like she's just standing there. Yeah, Menacingly, like, she wasn't like brooding off on a on a gargoyle yeah, like, overlooking everything. No, nah, she was just kind of like observing, and other people were too. So I guess it was just one of those things that maybe like everything just kind of calmed down at that point, because it's still like a really big thing. Like seeing all these people, you even saw in the opening that people were like noticing, like, oh, is that Mister Incredible? Or um, I think it's more of like Elastic Girl and like Frozone. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was a it was a really weird situation with them in the opening because they were turned into police, and the fact was is that even though they stopped the drill from hitting City Hall, it was still viewed as like oh, best uh, portrayed from that one guy. I keep forgetting his name, but he was definitely like the guy who was to bring the superheroes back mm -hmm. earnestly, and he was bringing up a good point. Like this is what the media shows, which is like the big drill just about to touch uh city hall and then them just being arrested yeah and then like that's bad publicity so what we want to do is like provide some insurance so they had um body cams body like a police cam. officer essentially yeah and i think that was a really good idea and i think this is where it helps out the plot even more so considering like who the villain is at the end of the day mm -hmm. who was um evelyn right yes uh the sister of the main benefactor who's trying to get heroes to go which was actually really interesting because I was expecting, like, both of them to be in cahoots about this. That's what I thought, too. Because, like, this is too perfect. Like, he's so enthusiastic, which I appreciate, but there's something off. There, well, at least I feel like there should be something off. But, no, it was totally fine, like, with him. But, like, Evelyn was, like, behind everything. Like, being a screen slaver. And having this brilliant idea of, like, creating all these, like, I guess... What's the word? Just, like, I guess backups in case, like... Like, her, I guess, identity uh, gets um, compromised. Mm -hmm. So even though Elastigirl, like, really thwarted, like, all, like, the ideas that Screen Slaver had, uh, it came down to the point, like, this is way too easy. Like, this person is, like, really smart. So why did it just have to come down to me just coming to his place, simply unlocking the front door to break in? 
Like it was all like, it was all a setup just so like, I love Evelyn can like erase her tracks. But sadly, the girl has years of experience being superhero. She knows what to look for. Yeah, like even on her first day, like she hasn't like skipped a beat either. Mm-hmm. Like you said, fourteen years off the beat to <laughs> straight straight back into the fire, and she already knows what's up. Mm-hmm. And that's what I just like about her. Like, not only is she like really well well versed in like as far as like rescue like operations, but she can also do like covert and etc. Mm-hmm. So it was just really cool to just see her have a lot more of a solo act here. As far as, like, investigations, as far as just, like, handling all these different crimes, which I was, I guess we were all right about, was that, like, these are just too easy. Like, they're all setups just to lead to something, but to be a plot hole device for this. I mean, I really love the movie. I even love how um, the handle of, like, Mr. Incredible and the kids as well. Oh, yeah, that that whole uh, subplot was really done very well. And you feel for him, and you see him grow and become a better dad, and stop fucking up and ruining everyone's lives and whatnot and making his kids want to throw there's an ant in the cup lid from god knows where oh well but anyway and making his kids want to renounce superheroes and throw their super suit in a blender well the garbage disposal tried emphasis on trying edna mode shout out to her she's a real mvp making them she's the real ass making them cool ass super suits that can withstand everything yeah being chewed on being thrown in garbage disposal, raccoon attacks. Raccoon attacks. That was probably like top ten, top three best fights in the movie. <laughs> Added to <laughs> Jack Jack versus the raccoon was like honestly like the greatest thing. Yeah, because I don't know like what age Jack Jack is. Baby, <laughs> just a baby. But he also has like some pretty good perception of, as far as like what he wants to do. And yeah, he how has to real get... good comprehension of things. Mm-hmm. So that that could also be just a superpower within itself, but mm-hmm. I love like the interaction as far as like the development of that issue of like what can Jack Jack do and like what are the um, ways of like kind of preventing him from like going absolutely out of control, and then ultimately at the end of the plot just kind of being an asset to the Incredibles family, and it was all thanks to Edna because <laughs> because Mister Incredible was like just like I need help. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you like superhero things. Here's a baby. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? And she was absolutely nope about it until she actually saw like the very first thing, which is... The nose. Jack-Jack, Jack-Jack. is a polymorph. Yeah. He has many powers, and Edna one just... of them is the ability to change shape, and he changed into a small baby Edna mode. And she was like, yes, I'll take it off your hands. And just like overnight, she created like... The perfect, um, well, not perfect, because because of what happened afterward, uh, way of just creating the perfect suit for uh, Jack Jack, especially for the fire extinguisher. Yeah, uh, a lavender berry, um, flame retardant that's safe, edible, edible and delicious. <laughs> and Jack Jack loved the hell out of it. He was like, <laughs> every time it went off, he would giggle. I really hope that like if they do make like another like Incredibles, it would take place with like a a, a little bit more of a mature like older Jack. Nope. I would love. I would love to see like. I never want to see him grow up. I just want to see Baby Jack Jack forever doing Baby Jack Jack stuff. It is very amusing, especially with the raccoon. Raccoon was looking for a fight. Like, oh shit! What did you just do? You're gonna regret the. Oh! Okay. <laughs> I want to break down that fight a little just because it was so fucking awesome for people that haven't watched the movie and want to watch the movie and don't care for spoilers. Okay. It all starts because Jack-Jack refuses to go to sleep, and so he's up watching movies with Bob, and one of them is features a robber robbing a convenience store gun at gunpoint wearing the robber mask. Mm-hmm. And in that instant, Jack-Jack is mad at the robber. And then he hears like a rustling in a trash can. He looks over and there's the raccoon with a little robber mask on. And he's like, no. <laughs> and so he crawls his baby ass all the way across across the house. Mm-hmm. Freaking flash teleports him or flash like melds through a the goddamn glass, glass, glass pane to outside. Starts picking a fight with this raccoon. Slaps him, steals his chicken bone, throws it in the trash, 
and covers the trash can. That starts the fight. The <laughs> raccoon was not having that bullshit right now. So they started throwing hands. That was absolutely great. They were just, <laughs> man, it was just hands for the longest. And then Jack Jack started, he did, what was the first thing he did? He started teleporting and yeah. kicking, kicking its ass. And then he got, um, he like super threw it into a bunch of uh, like a lounge, chairs lounge chairs where it then got stuck in it. And then, of course, he bursts into flames, and the raccoon wasn't having it. Uh-uh. He was like, stop playing, man. Be cool. Be cool. I was just playing. At the end of the aisle of all these lounge chairs, you see Jack-Jack ignite and then grab each one, like, shove them on the side. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> There's, like, six lawn chairs, one of them holding a raccoon, and just all of them slowly bursting in... All of them slowly bursting into flames, being tossed as he approaches this raccoon. Hoping for a swift death that wouldn't come. Raccoon escapes at the last second. Starts kicking his ass again. They're throwing hands. He he runs off and starts hiding on like an umbrella or a parasol is what they're called. Yeah. And Jack Jack starts shooting at him with some fucking... Eyeball lasers. Got some goddamn Star Wars laser fire. Cuts, Cuts the parasol in half. Starts fighting the raccoon again. Raccoon's like, surprise attack! And Jack Jack's like, surprise! I'm made out of bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> That's when uh, Mr. Incredible woke up and he was like, "What the? Oh no!" <laughs> and thus he discovered his baby hat powers. Yeah, it actually took us a, a good like entire movie for like all the cast to recognize that this baby has powers. Mm-hmm. It was great though. Just like each like reaction of to, to that was like, he has superpowers. Why didn't you tell us? Frozen was definitely the best. Like, whoa! The fact that Incredible was just so nonchalant, like, hey, you want a popping a cookie? And he's just like, Jack, Jack, mum- one cookie? He's starting to num- mumble like some nonsense. Num num cookie. <laughs> num num cookie. When was the last time you got sleep? Who keeps track of that? At that point, like, when he rolls up to Edna, he's just like, <laughs> oh my god, it's worse than I thought. No, no, the baby's right here. <laughs> something, something made Elastigirl suit? Tell me, what's wrong? Oh my god, it's worse than I thought. No, I have the baby right here. But can you do this? <laughs> <laughs> I do have to admit, like, both their reactions to discovering Jack Jack's powers was, oh my god. <laughs> that was a great little They're bit. They're both filled with absolute delight. I was surprised, though, like, this entire movie, I think it's better than the first one yeah and i feel like the incredibles one was definitely like a one-hit wonder like this is like the pinnacle that it could be but no the second one um minus like the game sequel was um it was actually really good really good i like how they all the characters like respond in all these situations i like kind of i guess the role swap that uh mr incredible and last girl had and then just like how they treated like the villain and Just the plot and the subplot. Dude, fucking Bob's ego got punched in the nuts when he was passed up as, like, the debut hero. And I like how he just, he kind of sticks that character, but eventually, like, changes, like, when he's raising the kids. Mm -hmm. He he learned that it's a heroic act to be a parent. I mean, this all comes down to, like, him trying to teach, like, Dash how how to do math. How to math. Especially how math does math and changes every time. Violet <laughs> had that issue with the boy mm-hmm. losing his memories because her identity was compromised. And so, she, yeah, she was kind of like going through mood swings here and there. And she was, is she having adolescence? Yes and no. <laughs> Very complicated situation with her, especially at the uh, little restaurant. I love that scene. I'm <laughs> like... The amount of detail that went into after she shot all that water out of her nose, it it shows her face, and you just kind of like see snot and water just stuck on the front of her Which, face. Wasn't she also out of focus too? Yeah. So you can still see it, like, oh no. It's like I I can feel it on my face. Just this this poor girl. She's just all bad right now. And she's trying to recover from that. And then Bob Person continues to push it. Like, oh, you've probably met Violet. Like, she goes to your school. And she was like, <laughs> without even looking. Fucking finger gun. 
<laughs> until she finally gave up and like ran away to the bathroom. Where's she going? Like probably somewhere to be mad. <laughs> Oh, can we talk about, like, when they actually discovered the new house that was given to them? And how, like, Dash immediately ruins everything. And as it keeps going, I'm just, like... <sighs> just get, making it worse and worse. Because, like, oh, nice. like you know, He broke the couch! He's a fucking Steven! <laughs> broke the couch, wet the couches. <laughs> but it's nice that they get to keep the house at the end of the day. Because it was, like, from that one from the guy. Yeah, the benefactor. And it was just, also just like the whole plot of just like Evelyn and the screen slaver. I thought it was just really well handled considering that it was kind of a thing where you had to really think outside of the box. And I was kind of hoping that like somewhere deep down Evelyn would actually like change at the very end. Where it's like she did it. Well, I mean like. She has all these wits to like pretty much outsmart everyone, or at least get them to a very compromisable decision where she played Elastic Girl, and everyone could have gotten away with all of it if yep. it weren't for those meddling kids. Those meddling kids, and it kind of shows to me like, I mean, you don't need to have superpowers to like be able to take them out. So well, that's exactly and that's what, what Syndrome yeah, did. Yeah, Syndrome did. Yeah, it's just like it's a shame that like a lot of those situations in the past, specifically. Uh, just kind of get to them, especially since it all came down to, like, their father and their mother. And the mother wanted to take them to the panic room because, like, the heroes aren't going to come back. But then the father insisted on trying to call them until, like, the robbers came in and shot him. It was... And then I am Batman. And then Evelyn became the, the anti-Batman. <laughs> essentially. I was kind of hoping for some kind of change in there. But, I mean, she was in jail, at least. And she admitted that she got saved. So, I guess that's probably the best we can go with that. Just because you saved me doesn't mean right. <laughs> Shout out to Void, though. Void was great. She, I... she she was by far my favorite character. Like, bar none, she was my favorite character. Based around the fact that her personality fits her situation so incredibly well. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she's she's a young girl. She's, a, I would say, her early to mid-20s. She's our age. Mm-hmm. And she's growing up in a time. She grew up in a time where powers were outlawed, and she probably didn't have super parents to like guide her and be like, "Hey, it's cool, it's okay, mm. it's fine." Like uh, Dash and Violet do. So she grew up trying to hide herself and hide her powers, and grew insecure because she's different and it's not okay to be different. And so she doesn't know how to be okay with using her powers. Mm -hmm. And she has a lot of social anxiety and just as a result, especially when you're talking about other super, especially talking about to other superheroes too, mm -hmm. like Elastic Girl is someone like she really looked up to as well for just just being out there and pretty much representing like what she could be, and so there was that anxiety there, and to see her like you know perform like as Elastic Girl and for her to try like exemplify that and use her own powers. So when it came, push comes to shove to that final moment, she has a lot of issues, like figuring out like what to do because mm -hmm. she never had like hero practice with it. She never used it practically. When she was being mind control, she was a like, goddamn pro. Mm -hmm. No anxiety. It's just do. She gave Violet a run for her mother and her money. <laughs> oh, I guess you got that too. She gave all of them a run for their money. Dude, that fight with Frozone and like the seven supers. That was crazy. I love how chaotic that scene was, how frantic it was, especially like when it came down to the first strike. He was like, okay, whew, close it, lock it, everyone go. Oh, yeah. I think Jack, yeah, Dash was the one who actually summoned the Incredible Yeah, the Incredible And that ended up being the savior of them because Frozone got caught too. Yeah, he did. It kind of shows, like, despite, like, all these heroes kind of been hiding, so they don't really have too much practice. Together, they really, like, compromised everything. Because it's not them that are in control of their actions. It's one person, one person controlling who, it all. And right. So It's kind of like how pain was, where if they, if, if they had, like, free thought and free will, things wouldn't run as smoothly. But because it's all one cohesive thought, mm -hmm. it's just different parts of a hand moving dude i think what astounded me was like violet going through all those different walls that jack jack just ran through yeah and just seeing them continue on longer than i would anticipate usually those type of things wouldn't uh, carry on for like maybe just 
four seconds and this one just came out and carried on for six and that just made a world of a difference to me because you see every single detail of like each room that she passes by and then you see as like the holes get smaller as he reverts from his giant self mm-hmm. back to baby yeah it was just like oh was so good they actually had like a little preview blurb about like the makings of this uh movie just saying like i know it's been a long time and that was a pretty much it. like and they were talking about like how well the animation required for this was like immense so yeah it took 14 years or so but please enjoy like this movie and it was really good so yeah it, uh, samuel jackson it, was, it said it was it would be worth the wait and it was it was <laughs> kept you waiting huh kept you waiting huh i guess that's pretty much it um yeah it was definitely worth a watch uh epile- epilepsy be warned but yeah it was great so if i have any one thing to say about the movie and to the movie it's you're pretty good <laughs> You're pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> but yeah. All right. So we'll just end the discussions here. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to know more about our discussions on movies, etc., please be sure to like the video and also subscribe to the channel. There's also a notification button down below. Uh, if you click that, it lets you know when we upload videos by the minute. And also support our Patreon. And there's also a merch store down below. So thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Hashtag bye, everyone. <laughs> I'd say I rate this movie. You're pretty out of good. <laughs> you had a good. <laughs>